Oh, blah, blah, blah. No, how many have I got in here? Over 100 plants? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Florence, if you're new here. I live in a one bed flat in London with over 150 houseplants. Today I'm gonna to be showing you round part two, which is our living room. We've got over 100 plants in here, ranging from anthuriums to philodendrons to succulents and cacti. If you haven't caught part one, I'll link it in the description below and go check that out after. Being in a one bed apartment, we're pretty short on space, so We've got wires in here, which are really cool because they hold over 20 house plants on their own. So it means that they can grow downwards and really feel like you're under a jungle canopy. Here's some ivy that I got from my parents' garden. My dad actually chopped it off a tree uh, last time I was down and we submerged it in concrete and put it in a plant pot. And then we've got some Rifidophora trailing up it. So it is starting to attach, it is still attached by strings. But we've got some new growth both in the pot and at the top. So although it looks a bit sad, it is growing. And then our potting station, which Hal built. I don't know what I'd do without this because it doubles up as storage and we just needed to move some plants off the floor. So I'd start off by going from this side to that side. So here is a little while of grandis. Um, they grow to be absolutely amazing plants, so I'll insert a photo here. Um, so I'm hoping in about 50 years when we have our forever home and grandkids <laughs> that we'll have an amazing palm tree. Here is a Hypertia numerifolia. Um, it was about 28 days in shipping from Thailand, so I didn't think it was going to make it, but it's just the hardiest plant I've ever had. And it's pushing out so much new growth, and everybody who sees this just absolutely falls in love at first sight. So here we've got a Begonia maculata. We've got several cuttings throughout the flat, um, which I'm hoping just to pop back in and we can have a really full plant. Up here we've got an Anthurium carinervium. So this new leaf has just popped out about two weeks ago. And any damage that you see on this, we have really harsh water up here. So although the plants don't love it, they just have to deal with it. Here we've got another philodendron from in the bedroom. Um, I don't think this cutting is going to make it. It's in moss and I just can't get along with moss at all. And we've got some Hoya cuttings recently here. We've got another stem of hearts, um, which I'm hoping to keep chopping up and put in the bedroom eventually on the scales so that they will become full plants again. And here's my queen Anthurium. This is a love and hate relationship. I absolutely love her, she hates me. Um, it had two leaves when I got it and it was in a really heavy soil mix. So I've had it for about a year um, and I've just put it in a holy pot in the hope that it will actually grow for me. I mean, I know that they're beavers, and it's just, oh, it be a sad day. I actually have no idea what this plant is called, but I'll insert it. And it's got an amazing purple back to the leaves, and in the right light, this shines a really beautiful silver. And it's a really fast grower, and I have to turn it every day because it leans towards the sun so much. Up here, we've got a philodendron varicosum. This is the number one go-to for me. I've only had it for about two months, but I'm not sure that you can see, but this, the back of the leaves are just insane. 
I mean, it's got four new leaves which have just been pushed out. You can see up here there's another new leaf on the in, and it's just absolutely amazing. This is Monstera Peru. Um, I really didn't like this plant when I bought it home and it was kind of a regret purchase but it's just been shoved in this tiny dark corner and loves it. So it's bringing back my respect to it. This is a new shipment from last week. Um, this is an Epiphyllum flamingo. I just love Epiphyllum so it doesn't matter if they flower or not, just as long as I've got more in my home. This is some lipstick cuttings for my mum. I will say that these take about three months to root. And when they do root, they root really well, but it's just getting them responsive. And then here we've got Begonia Tamea. These are just angel wing begonias, and people lop off any new growth, which is why they look like a tree. So I'm going to try and do this with the two cuttings that I've got in the kitchen for my mum and for my sister. Okay, um, I'm just going to touch quickly on it. So we've got a fan for aeration because it does get really stuffy and hot in here in the summer. So I just think that my plants benefit a bit from having some airflow. And these are really cheap grow lights, which I'll link in the description as well. And they're about £20 off Amazon. And obviously the cotton station is not the best light. So whenever the sun goes down, I turn these on for maybe three, four hours. So here on our dining table, we never really eat here to be honest, because it's always filled with plants. Um, we've got some propagations going on, so I've got some Hepertia squarosa and Hepertia numerofolia square form, which broke off from the shipments from Thailand as I was unpackaging them. Um, thankfully, I think they have actually all taken, so I'm just leaving them in here. I'd take the lid off maybe every day or so for 20 minutes of airflow next to the fan. And here are some seeds waiting to germinate. Um, that'll be in an upcoming video. Okay, so this corner is still a bit mismatched and everything's just shoved here. Um, so we've got a fiddly fig which is living up to its name. We've had this about six months and it's not lost any leaves, but it's also not grown any. And it's got prime real estate, so I'm really hoping that it will grow. <laughs> and then we've got a jade plant down here from Howell's mum who grows absolutely hundreds of them. Some Sansevieria cuttings. In the little greenhouse, we've got some burrow's tail pellets, which have just been shoved in there, and also some lobelia seeds germinating for the window boxes. Okay, and then we have a very sad pink syngonium, which I forgot to water for about two months because it was somewhere that I couldn't see it. It is finally getting new growth, so I think they are actually more resilient than people give them credit for. And then this is a propagation bowl, it doesn't look that exciting, but anything that drops off any of the plants I just shove in here. I haven't actually watered this, so it does need some water, but you can see that they're starting to grow and it's just a nice way to create new plants. And then here, this cactus is probably the oldest plant in the flat. I started collecting plants when I was 18 and this was shoved in a really dark corner um, for many years and has gone through so many moves. So now that it's actually getting some good sunlight, it's, I think it, it's grown about this much in the last year, which I'm quite happy with considering that it was mistreated for so long. And then here is the famous Helia peperomoides. So although it looks cool and, you know, I'm hoping that one day it will be really impressive, it's just not got on my heart, this plant. It gets the dregs of any watering can and it was a gift so I can't throw it out or give it away. And then up here we've got a spiral cactus and a Lepicerus. I don't know if I'm saying that right but I'll put the name on the screen. And this is the heaviest cactus you will ever hold. It's got no spikes which is really nice but it's just absolutely mental. And up here we've got a burrow's tail. Um, this was pellet propagation last summer. Um, I put them under a little dome and only took that off about a month ago. Put it up in that corner and it's just such a happy little plant. And then here we've got an elephant foot cordex plant. 
These are really cool because they go dormant in winter and they sprout from this little elephant foot because when they grow bigger and they get about a foot wide, the ones that I've seen, and they're just absolutely amazing. They put out these really cute little heart-shaped leaves. So I'm hoping by the end of the summer to be a full wash with green. And then moving down, we've got a vanilla orchid. So I'm hoping once all of this is out of the way and I can kind of spread out the plants a bit more, but some ivy from my parents' place is gonna go here, which they've already got ready for me. Um, and it'll have something to tell us up. But the end thing is, is that I don't want to become too hopeful because they have to be 16 foot before they produce vanilla pods. This is the type of Kalanchoe. It's really velvety and so soft, and it's not one that I see in many people's collections. Um, I would really highly recommend this because they're just really happy little plants, and they create little pups out of the soil. So if you can get one, definitely do it because it would be a good investment. And then we've got a cylindrical Santaveria here, just some online baby plants in a tiny pot. Um, some Hawarthia, which are also I bought actually around the same time as this cactus and it was so mistreated, it was in a little tiny plastic pot with no drainage for about four years and eventually I put it in here and it's actually started to grow and sprout and just look a bit happier and get that window effect back on the new leaves. Back here we've got a raindrop Peperomia variegata. Um, this did struggle with thrips, so you can see here there was quite a lot of thrip damage. I think I finally got rid of them um, and did a massive pruning back. So I'm going to wait for a few new leaves to come through and see what happens with that one. And we've got a normal um, raindrop peperomia here as well. And this is a silver dollar vine, which was about this tall when I got it, um, about six months ago. And as soon as you give it something to trellis up, it really goes for it. This is an all new growth here. In the last three weeks, it's put this up from nothing. Got some more burrow's tail propagations happening here. And some poor Hindu rope. So everybody says that this is a really slow growing plant. But actually, I got it and it was about here and that was a year ago. So I don't think it is that slow. And it's just shoved in the corner. And again, like the Pelia, it just gets the dregs of the watering can. Okay, moving on to the windowsills. These are a bit messy at the moment because we've got a lot of propagations. So here you've got a rainbow enchevaria. I'll link the correct name on there. It did not do well in shipping and came with a Compton carousel as well, which didn't make it. We've got quite a few caladiums here, which I'll talk about in a minute. So this is the white queen coming up. And you can see all of the leaves. This will need to be moved out of our south window because obviously the leaves will burn. But for now, just while it's starting to sprout, I'm trying to give it as much energy as possible. This is not going to come back from the dead, but I'm still keeping it here because I'm so hopeful. It's a Manny Hot Grahami Eye. And yeah, they're just amazing. I'll insert some uh, photos of what it looked like last summer. But stupidly enough, I didn't trim it down. So for that reason, it didn't branch out and become a hardier stem. But because it's still just the early days of spring, I'm really hoping that it will come back. Here we've got what me and my mum call a Greg sausage roll. I can't actually remember the name of it. I think it's a hot dog cactus. Um, it grows little uh, leaves similar to the stem of dolphins. It's got these really cool patterns on the stems. And then here we've got a booby cactus which is absolutely incredible. It came from Italy before the whole issue of postage. So that one is a prime spot and it actually needs a lot more water than you think. So with the caladiums, we are actually struggling with fungus gnats at the moment because there's so much damp soil. And I didn't really want to go around the route of sprinkling cinnamon on every single plant. So I've got these um, carnivorous plants, which have a dewy hair on them, which makes the fungus gnats stick to them. Since we've had them in the last two weeks, there's been a significant drop in the amount of fungus gnats that we have, and it's even starting to flower. 
These do need about an inch of water pre-boiled and cooled down to sit in at all times. As well as the humidifier over on the potting station and living in London, so the humidity is quite good anyway, we just boost the humidity using these radiator tanks that hold water and as the radiator turns on, it obviously evaporates into the air and creates a more humid atmosphere. Okay, and here is another sad story. As you can see, there's a bit of a theme. So we have some string of coins in here and some string of dolphins. The string of dolphins were just plunked in there to try and promote a bit of green into this pot. That's been sat there for about a year and hasn't changed, but hasn't died either. It used to be an incredible 12 inch pot but unfortunately didn't make it. Again, in the rehab corner, we've got some Philodendron melanocrysum, which came and two leaves broke off in shipping. This hasn't actually started to rot, so I'm not sure why it's gone brown. I waxed the ends of it, but as you can see, there's some new growth on this. So I am really hopeful eventually that will grow into a plant. So we've got some more uh, caladiums here. They sit on the radiator just because when we do have the radiator on, I think the heat really helps the bulbs to wake up a bit. And they're not directly on the radiator, we have them on little coasters and they do tend to switch around. So I'll move the larger ones onto here for one week and then shift them off and put the smaller ones on. So these are absolutely stunning and not what I thought they'd be at all. Um, I've never grown caladiums before, but the leaves are almost waxy and the foliage is even more beautiful in person. So again, we've got more caladiums here. These are actually going to go to my mum as soon as we can get down there. And another carnivorous plant. Got a little aloe here, which again has been neglected because it was in a corner that I couldn't reach. And here we've got a variegated bear's foot, so, or bear paw. Um, I didn't water this at all in the winter, and it's in a non-draining pot, and it's glazed. So I know it's not the ideal conditions for it, but having said that, it has just bounced straight back as soon as spring arrived. You might have noticed the window boxes, but that will be in another video. And then down here we've got a variegated monstera. I chopped it because I was doing a giveaway on Instagram and it's finally got some new growth. So I'm really hopeful that that'll be good variegation when that comes back. Okay, and then the thing that goes absolutely mental every time I post it on Instagram is this shelf. The wood is from my parents' garden, again. Both were made from planks and then this is a bit of twisted willow from one of their trees. I use this a lot for um, instead of moss poles because it just adds a really different look and the plants seem to really like it. So here we've got a type of Himalayan succulent. I'll post the names for all of these down below. A really furry succulent which I'm pretty sure is dead. So I'm just going to drop down to here and show you this is going to be planted up but I'm just waiting until this has had about two weeks in our home before I disturb its roots. And um, we've got a watch chain here, which had really bad mealybug and I just shoved it in the bathroom window and ignored it for six months. And it's come back and has zero mealybug. Got some Peperomia hope cuttings. Um, this is really cool, so it's a type of sedum, but it goes really hot pink in the summer. So again, if you can find these, I'd really recommend them. And then some string of dolphins that I've got. Um, up here we've got just a cactus, I think it was from Tesco's, and I've tried my hardest to get the little plastic flowers off, but I don't want to damage a plant, and I therefore I just don't feel comfortable, so I've just left them on. It doesn't seem to be stopping the growth. Another cylindrical Sansevieria up here. A string of pearls, some epiphyllum cuttings from the bathroom, which are really easy to take, and I'll show you how to do that in the video. 
At the top we've got, I think it's called a pickle plant. So that's grown immensely since I got it. And it's just up there with no drainage in normal house plant pot and compost with a bit of perlite. And it's just really cool. A golem succulent next to it, so that's just sat there and then some very sad reptilus cuttings which I need to water. Moving down, we've got some Hoya finlaysonii. Now I created this trellis in the hope that it would spiral around so this is what the rope is but it's finally starting to harden at the bottom and get some new leaves through and it was literally just the two, you know, there were two leaves one on each cutting when I got it and to see it finally start to shoot up after a year of nothing is really exciting. This is a type of cordex plant, I'll put the name next to it. Here we've got my amazing oxalis, now this died back in the winter as normal and it wasn't waking up so I got the tip that I was told to take the bulbs out of the soil, wash them in lukewarm water and replant them and that just seemed to give them the energy that they needed and now it's come back with a vengeance. I think it was probably about a third of this size and a lot shorter last year but now it needs its complete own spot to spread out. This is also really cool because it opens and closes so during the night time the leaves will shut down as will the flowers but as the day comes they open up and they move towards the sun. So throughout the day you can see that you know they're shut and then they all move that way. Okay, and then moving on to this bench, um, we've got this Syngonium, which is just a plug plant, just to fill a bit of space because why not? Back here we've got another elephant foot on a different sort of trellis. This one got damaged in shipping, so I think it's stopped growth, but I'm hopeful that by the end of summer, again, it will have started growing. Under here, we've got a Dechidia, which rotted out in postage. So now that it's in sphagnum, and underneath the bell jar, it will actually grow. Here we've got a Philodendron Mykins, which I cut up, propagations. Um, there is some sappy type damage on the back of the leaves, which I know is actually extremely common after researching it. And I'm gonna write on the screen what it's called because I don't think many people know. It does look like thrip damage, but from what I can see, it's this. Here we've got the amazing variegated Monstera borsigiana. I think I paid one, two, three leaves. I think it was about 30 pounds from Eastern Tropicals about a year ago, which was incredible value for money. These three leaves have all come in my care. It's actually just popped out a new leaf and that variegation is absolutely incredible. People say that these are really hard to take care of. I think they're actually easier than the normal Monstera. Um, they just need more light and people say that they burn really easily. I mean, this leaf is about a year old now and this, as you can see, is sectorial variegation but hasn't browned at all. Here we've got a Hoya Kerii and it's really nice to see one which isn't just one leaf in a pot. And I think it's, we've got it about here and so all of this has been grown in the last eight months. Again, we've got another cutting from the begonia in the kitchen. You can see here just how red the backs get. And those stems are absolutely amazing. They've got that kind of eyelash hair. And the fronts of the leaves go kind of greeny burgundy if they get enough light. Back here you've got a completely dead plant, they're actually outdoor plants. It looks no different to how it does when it's alive, so I just stopped watering it. And here you've got the jewel orchid. This is again a plant I would really recommend for beginners. It just shoots out growth, it's really beautiful and velvety, and it's just a really happy plant. Back here we've got another um, separation of the Sansevieria whale fin which I bought. 
Again, not sure if this has been reclassified, so I'll link that on the screen now if it has. And then if you look behind me, you've got a massive golden pothos. This was a cutting from my mum's mother plant. I think it came to us with two leaves and that was about 18 months ago. As you can see, it went a bit bald, so we've got a second stem trailing up to try and fill in that bald patch. Anyway, up to the wires. So up here we've got a satin potter. That again was ignored for ages and I've had it for about a year but it's finally pushing out new growth now that it's got a bit more light and we're a bit more regular on the walking. A Hoya Crinkle 8, which out of all of my Hoyas that puts out the least growth and it's just something about it. The foliage is absolutely amazing but it just doesn't grow for me. And then we've got a Crimson Queen which is on this planter that my dad made for me. Super simple, and might do a video of that at a later date if anyone's interested. And then a Hoya Serpens, which is said to be super difficult to keep alive. Whether it's just so humid in here that it's happy, I don't know. It's got loads of little flower buds on it, so I'm hoping at some point soon in the future it'll start to flower. Then we've got a black lipstick plant. This has actually been bleached a lot by the sun, but I still love to stand underneath it and look up at it. Got a monkey tail cactus, which supposedly, according to my mum, when you water them, um, they throw out their fronds and just really kind of curl upwards. But mine hasn't done that, whether hers is just a different you know, in a different climate, so it loves it more. I don't know. We've got an absolutely massive Peperomia Hope here. So this is bought again as a six inch pot, and I've had this for a year. It's probably about 10 centimetres long when I bought it, and now it's stretching over a metre and a half. So you can see how much they grow. Up here we've got a string of turtles. Now, again, everybody only seems to be able to find small pots of these. I was lucky enough and haven't repotted it, so you can see how large the pot was when I got it. But it's grown about 30 centimetres in the time that it's been sat in the sat window. Okay, here we have the burrow tail mother plant. You can see that it was knocked a fair bit, either heads walking under it or when it was repot. And then up here you've got a Ritsalis elliptica. This is a really cool plant actually and it desperately needs to be cotton. You've got the absolute monster that is a Raphidophora tetrasperma. Now I'm 90% sure that this is a tissue culture version. But that doesn't bother me at all. It's just a very happy plant and it just grows like crazy. It gets a lot of direct sun which I know a lot of people don't recommend, but it's got zero damage and absolutely loves it. It's got quite a few philodendron cuttings in here, so there's a mixture of lichens and the heart leaf. Um, I think there's also a silver satin pothos in there somewhere. And then looking up, you've got Hoya linearis. So a lot of people in America really struggle to find these, but luckily for us here in Europe, they come over from the Netherlands and they are just this big. Really easy care, but it does need a lot more water than people think. Okay, and then next to that, we've got a type of lipstick plant. How cool is this Finley's lipstick plant? So it's stuck with me. We've got an 18 year old York Terrier across Jack Russell at home, and I'm sure many of you can imagine how <laughs> I have got a lipstick plant with that. So this was another silly purchase of mine. It's a type of Scandapsis and I just don't like it. It doesn't like me. So I'm not sure whether I'll really give that away or you know, sell it somewhere. So up here we've got some Monstera Adamsonii. I believe this is the brown leaf one. As you can see there's a brown leaf so not everyone's collection is perfect. Um, but this seems to really like this corner. Before I've had Anthony and 
they just didn't like me and didn't like my care. And this has been the only one that I've successfully kept alive. So this is my absolute pride and joy. This is my cryptocardium. It started off with four leaves and since then it's just been pushing out growth after growth after growth. I shower it once a week and that is it. It just absolutely loves this spot. And then up here we've got a prayer plant or maranta. It's in a sky planter. I really like this to start with, but then as soon as the soil starts to dry out, if you forget to water it once, water will just pour down onto the floor. So I do recommend these, but potentially you might have the same problem as me. This is a lot more delicate than the regular form, but I will say that it is an absolutely stunning plant. I think these are fairly new to the market, but I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't quote me. But again, I really hope there's new growth. This is all damaged from shipping, so fingers crossed. And then we have my really sad Pertia Sclerosa. So this just has not liked anything that I've given it. It came super healthy, and within a day of opening it, it just went back. That's in a more soil substrate mix uh, than these ones, just because, you know, I think they seem to prefer more waterlogged conditions. And these baskets were from Tiger, I just cut holes in the bottom and filled them with this netting. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions about the wires or any sort of plant that you saw that I didn't touch on, make sure to comment below. And if you're new here, subscribe for more houseplant and lifestyle content. If you haven't seen part one yet where we touch on our bathroom, our kitchen, our hallway and our bedroom, make sure to check it out now. I'll put the link in the description box below and I'll see you next time. <laughs>